Regular expressions are one of the underappreciated marvels of modern world. They are a technique to write patterns and abstract concept on a piece of paper. This is Ali from Learn Awesome and this video is an introduction to a full series of playlists on regular expressions. They are a big and mature topic and to use them like a pro, you need to learn and understand a bunch of topics, syntax and concepts. As for their rate of return, that is time saved by using them in real life versus time spent learning them, I can tell you from experience that it is really high. To appreciate regular expressions, I'll begin the introduction by spending just a minute on patterns themselves and why they are important. Patterns are a mental shortcut our brain uses to process near unlimited data and make sense of new information without having to analyze every detail from scratch. More importantly, they help us model the world, predict things, and identify cycles or heartbeat of life. How? Consider an email or business letter. Before you start reading it, if you have dealt with such letters or emails before, you know where the sender and receiver name and address are to be found, where is the main punchline or subject of the letter is, where is the action request in content is, you get the picture. With patterns, we need to recall or match the incoming information with one simple rule or structure already stored as a recognized pattern. And this is where regular expressions, our topic for this series, do their magic. They are those simple rules or structures stored, and we can match the incoming information with that pattern to not only pass a judgment whether the incoming text matches our pattern, but also extract or parse identifiable information in a structured form and do all kind of interesting stuff with it. Let's go over some of the use cases of regular expressions in practical life before getting consumed by them. Arguably, the most common usage of regular expression remains data validation, where incoming text is matched against regular expression and flagged as matching or not matching, like whether the text is a valid phone number or email or IP address, etc. I almost use it daily to do a pattern-based search in IDEs like Visual Studio Code or Notepad++, as simple as search in code where I am logging to console with the word failed or something. You can also use it to extract data of interest from a large piece of text. For example, given a huge server log file, you can extract only those lines where users entered URLs that resulted in page not found, 404 errors or something. Or using our previous example, extract sender information, let's say sender's phone number from a business letter. You can search and replace data in a piece of text, which comes in handy again in tools that support it like Notepad++ and Visual Studio Code. Say you change your folder structure and want to update a document containing your file paths accordingly, regular expression would be your best friend to do so. You can use it to strip off data like stripping off all markup from an HTML document, leaving behind just the content. We're gonna see most of these in the videos coming forth. All right, enough examples to convince you regular expressions are awesome. Are you convinced? Hoping that you are, let's figure out how can a pattern be written down. Let's say you have a form where people submit phone numbers and it's your job to validate them for accuracy. By accuracy, I don't mean a phone rings or anything if you dial it, just that it's a proper phone number. Now that you have seen enough phone numbers to know what does a phone number look like, so you come up with a bunch of rules. Some are straightforward, like phone number can't contain alphabets, it would either start with a plus, which means following one to two digits would be a country code, or it would start with a number, in which case it would be a local phone number. It can also start with parentheses, enclosing the city or mobile carrier code, but those are strictly optional. Then there would be a three plus four digit phone number, where three digits are usually called telephone prefix, followed by four digit line number. All three, that is city carrier code, prefix, and line number, are separated by space, dash, or dot. So as you can imagine by now, you can write a full page terms and condition type draft for the rules to validate phone number pattern, but it is simply not practical in English. We need a concise format that is understandable by humans and computers alike, so they can do the validation automatically. No brainer that this concise format is called regular expressions that can bring this full page into a single line. They have their own vocabulary to do so though, and in this video series, we shall understand that vocabulary and solve the phone number regex a couple of videos down when you understand the constituent parts. So let's begin our journey of how regular expressions are written. To make a regular expression represent a string of incoming characters, the regular expression would use, among others, the following features. 
a character set that can be used by the incoming text, a way of representing which character would follow another, formerly known as concatenation. So let's say AB means A would be followed by B as per regular expression. Then a way of representing one character or the other alternatives. So A pipe symbol B means either A or B. And finally, a way of representing repeatedness, formerly called aesthetic or clean star against a famous mathematician Stephen Clean, which means the preceding character can appear zero or more times. I'm no expert, but these four are said to be sufficient to define a regular language. Personally, I can't confirm or contradict that claim, so let's just accept that on face value. The important point is these features capture the sequencing, optionality, and repeatedness in the input string using various syntactical techniques, as you shall soon see with examples as well. Like phone number has repeating digits of known length separated by one of the available separators, and character set is limited to numbers, plus sign, brackets, and separating characters. In practical usage, the list definitely doesn't end here. So for example, the aesthetic or clean star is complemented by clean plus, which indicates that preceding character can occur one or more times, making at least one occurrence mandatory, unlike clean star where occurrence is optional. With this list, you are starting to get an idea of what kind of language the regular expression itself is written in. And with that, we can have a few ultra basic examples of regular expressions with us, the examples would involve coming up with a regular expression and then a bunch of test strings and our objective is to see if the test string matched regular expression. In later videos, we shall steadily introduce more practical examples of regular expression usage as your understanding grows. How do we know when a regular expression has matched though? Well, this can be done through code like JavaScript, .NET, PHP, Python, etc. which all support regular expressions. Or there are a ton of online regular expression testing websites which let you evaluate an input string against regular expressions. In the next video, we shall see how to use one such test website and how to use the features it provides to try out regular expressions. Next, we'll give you taste of the blood, that is some basic regular expressions, explaining the features we discussed earlier, which would help you get a real feel of what regular expressions actually look like and what we mean by matching and all abstract terms we have been using in this video. In later videos, the playlist would cover all concepts related to regular expressions like assertions, flags, capturing groups, character classes, quantifiers, and more. We would go over each concept individually in detail and focus on practicing with examples both on test website and code like JavaScript and Python. With regular expressions, the biggest issue is there is a lot of syntax to memorize, and the best way to do so is practice using relevant examples and build a muscle memory that will remain with you throughout. And I'm sure we can help you with that in this playlist. That is it for this one. This video is just introduction to the playlist on Learn Awesome YouTube channel. So don't forget to follow the series entirely and being generous with thumbs up and subscribing. If you are watching this as part of yet another full stack development course, note rest of the videos on this topic will be in the playlist dedicated to regular expressions. Hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.